Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a review of the quizzes for Chapter 8 Hypothesis Testing for Behavioral Science Statistics. We're looking at the second online quiz in this example. The first question in this quiz is, a type 1 error occurs when a, the sample is too small for significance testing, b, the sample data lead us to reject an null hypothesis that is true, c, the sample data lead us to retain, that is, fail to reject a null hypothesis that is false, or D, the sample data are biased in a systematic way. Well, a type 1 error occurs when the sample data lead us to reject a null hypothesis that is true. Now, this is the long and correct explanation. However, it is easier to remember it's a false positive. And so the idea here is that the null hypothesis is true. In fact, let's take a look here. So here I've got two distributions. The one on the left is the null distribution. And so that represents the range of possible sample means when nothing is happening and the only variation is due to sampling error. And we're doing a little one-tailed test here and you see that the red part on the top, that's the top 5% of the distribution. And if something were, if a sample mean were to get up in that range, we would reject the null hypothesis and assume that it's different. And you can see that the distribution on the right is the alternative hypothesis, and there's a whole lot more uh, sample means with that value from the alternative hypothesis, so it's a more likely outcome. But the value that we have here for x is still possible for the null distribution. And so it, assuming that really there is nothing going on, we get, an ex, uh, we get a sample mean this high, it happens, but because it's uh, and on the far side of our cutoff, we would reject the null hypothesis, even though in this particular case, maybe we shouldn't. And that's what a type 1 error is. Again, it's because of the random sampling. You haven't made a mistake, it's just sampling error. Uh, gets us through this sort of fluke, and uh, a sample with a really high mean. And it goes past our cutoff, even though, in fact, that sample can arrive, uh, arise through random chance. Number two, a type 2 error occurs when A, the sample data leads to reject a null hypothesis that is true, B, the sample is too small for significance testing, C, the sample data leads to retain, that is, fail to reject a null hypothesis that is false, or D, the sample data are biased in a systematic way. Well, a type 2 error, we did type 1 a moment ago, but right now a type 2 error occurs when the sample data leads to retain, that is, fail to reject a null hypothesis that is false. What that is, is a false negative, meaning there really is something going on and we should have rejected it, but our sample data didn't lead us to that conclusion. Here's the same picture, except this time we got this uh, little red X and it's you know in the center of things. And the idea here is that that X could very easily come from the alternative hypothesis on the right. But because it is to the left of the cutoff point that we have for the null hypothesis, we have this little criterion beforehand. We say, look, if it's beneath this value, we're going to accept it as random chance variation. And it's a reasonable conclusion. It's actually slightly more likely to be from the null than from the alternative in this particular case. Now, the trick I should mention, by the way, is you can describe the null hypothesis distribution very well, but you don't know where the alternative hypothesis is, that, that distribution. So there's sort of a little work of fiction here. But it, you see, it could arise from the alternative hypothesis, but because it's on the low end and it's within, it's below the critical value for the null, we would assume that it, in fact, represented no variation when it does. Again, it's not that you made a, uh, the, the, you were dumb and you made the, the wrong choice. You set up a criterion, the, because of sampling error, the sample mean fell in that range, and you made the principal decision. It just happened to be wrong due to sampling error. Number three, when choosing a level of alpha for a hypothesis test, unless you have a compelling reason to do otherwise, you should use 01, 10, 50, or 05. Well, the answer for this one is 05, and this is the false positive uh, rate, the type one error rate. And let's just take a look. Here I've got two distributions, and you see that we've got the alpha of 05 marked in red on the both of them. Again, uh, in this particular case, it's a directional or one-tailed hypothesis test. Uh, we usually do two-tailed, unless, again, unless you have a compelling reason to do one-tailed. 
But the O5 is very strongly ingrained. It is ultimately arbitrary, but it is the it's a convention for many, 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 many years. And so you'll use that unless you have some sort of strong reason to do something else. Okay, next, if a researcher is using an alpha of O5 for a Z test, which is normal, and gets an observed or test p-value of 0.23, then the researcher should A, reject the null hypothesis, B, retain or fail to reject the null hypothesis, C, change the alpha to a larger value, or D, use a one-tailed test instead. So you set up your criterion and say that the, we're going to uh, set off 5% of the z-score, of the z-distribution, and you get a test value, a p-value of 0.23, and I don't know why the point's on a different line here, then what you should do is retain or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Because what you're saying is, here's our same distribution, is say for instance, um, actually this looks about right, we've got the 5% of the null distribution set off there to the right and it's in red. But the red X marks our sample value and you can see that about a quarter, you know, a lot of the distribution uh, the null distribution is still at values like the x that we have, especially if you go both directions. It's a pretty high value. And so to say that we have a 23% chance, that's what the p-value means, we have a 23% chance of getting a sample effect this big just through random error in the null, that's too big. We The the alpha of 05 says it needs to be less than a 5% before we start suspecting something big is going on. Okay, last question in quiz two. If a researcher is using a critical value of plus or minus 1.96 for a z-test and gets an observed or test z-score of negative 0.173, then the researcher should A, retain or fail to reject the null hypothesis, B, reject the null hypothesis, C, change the critical value to a smaller value, or D, use a one-tailed test instead. The answer here is retain or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And let's look at our exact same picture here. So for instance, what it's saying is we, we set up this decision criterion that it has to be at least 1.96 standard error. Well, what it is that it has to be is that the sample mean has to be at least 1.96 standard errors away from uh, the middle of the null distribution. The one we have is 1.73 standard errors and below. So it's close to 196, but it's not there all the way. And because we set up this criterion ahead of time and the data don't get to that point, then we need to say that we do not yet have compelling evidence of a difference and we retain the null hypothesis, which says nothing's going on and any variation is due to chance fluky variation. That's also called failing to reject the null hypothesis. Anyhow, that's it for the second quiz on chapter eight. I'll see you for the third one.